So welcome back folks. So today we'll be looking at a quick overview or walkthrough of the Wallbox Pulsar Pro EV charger. There's obviously a lot of EV chargers out there in the market. The reason why I specifically chose Wallbox was because of its form factor and the fact that it also supports three phase power. The C-Line 7, as you know, uh, actually comes with 11 kilowatts charging AC. Uh, so I wanted to get something that supports that minimally. I also actually had a couple of neighbors nearby that had actually the older version of wall boxes plugged in and uh, I kind of like uh, how it all looks uh, and fits the aesthetics of the house. So I'm going to show you in a bit and uh, you probably understand what I mean. Just a bit of context for wall boxes. So wall box is actually a Spanish company, uh, I believe based out of Barcelona. There's actually a couple of resellers in Singapore that actually does Wallbox. I actually contracted uh, a folks at Interwell to help me with the install and coordination. Later, as we go down to the basement, I will actually show you a little bit of how they install uh, or how the team actually installed the cabling and uh, emergency stops, etc. And then uh, I'll try my best to hold the camera and narrate as I go along. I will also go through the app that Wallbox comes with to kind of show you what's available on the app from a function and feature perspective. So let's start with the models of wall boxes that are available for home charging. I believe there's actually three models. So there is the uh, Pulsar Plus, there is also the Pulsar Max, and then there is the Pulsar Pro, which is the one I actually eventually had. The key difference between these three is essentially the generations, if I'm not mistaken. So Plus is really the first generation with very basic Wi-Fi connectivity. Uh, Max was something that uh, was later released. Uh, they had better functionalities and also a better, more stable Wi-Fi. That's what I heard. And finally, the Pro Max uh, had 4G as part of the setup. The Pro is also targeted for uh, condominiums or public charging areas because it supports multi-user with an RFID. But of course, uh, that's not something that I actually require because I use it primarily for uh, personal use. But if you kind of, you know, are looking something for your condo or your shared housing, that's perhaps one of those uh, considerations that you might want to look at. So with that, let's go check out the charger. All right, so this is the wall box here. And as you can see, um, it's installed with a uh, separate isolator. And it also comes with the cable hook. Uh, so you can actually kind of twirl your cable around it. Um, the charging case is pretty standard, um, type two. Uh, it comes with a little cover. I'm not too sure you can see it. So it's got a little cable dangling just to keep the dust out. Uh, pretty nice. So it comes with this little charger head as well. But unfortunately, let me just do this. You would think that it's much nicer to just kind of plug it in like that. Um, it feels super loose. Um, I'm not too sure I can zoom in. You see, it doesn't really do a tight fit. And hence, I actually don't um, use this hanger a whole lot often. So I just prefer to kind of coil it around. Looks a lot neater. So I'll, I'll trace the wires. So the wires got routed right above my cabinet. I'll not show you that and it goes all the way up there and it comes down and it's a bit dark and there we go the uh, emergency stop buttons here oops okay I'll get that in the wall so it's also connected inside here it's super dark here I'll, I'll probably not go through so the distribution and the breaker switches are all in here so yeah so let's look at the app. As you can see, the top section is the status of the charger. If you plug it in, it will show how much uh, power is being pulled through and I'll show you in a bit. The next section shows, you know, there's an update available for the charger. I've been told by the installers to specifically not install the updates because there's been instances in Singapore when the update's been installed and it kind of broke the charger. I've also looked at the release notes. Uh, some of the release notes about the charger updates were pertaining mostly with the shared capability, so I'm not too fast not having the updates anyhow. Next section is the scheduling. Uh, it doesn't really apply to us in Singapore because we don't actually have any uh, off-peak charging rates, but if you wanted to, you could. Uh, you can easily add a schedule. Uh, I, I use it more of a timer in case I want to go to sleep and you know want to turn the, the charger off after a couple of hours. I can set the uh, charging schedule almost like a timer. And then the last part here is the energy insights. I personally like this a lot. 
it shows me how much I'm consuming on a day-to-day, week-to-week or monthly basis. You can actually put in your tariff here. So as you can see, I've already consumed 107 uh, watts this uh, month and um, about spent about 30 bucks. I'll show you where the tariff works. So going to the settings, uh, some of the capabilities, as you can tell here, uh, you require to have proximity to the charger uh, so you can trigger Bluetooth before you can actually configure all this. I think it's a bit of um, safety and security feature uh, that's built into the charger. You can actually connect to this charger remotely, obviously, uh, via the app. Uh, I mean, one of the ways you can do it, obviously, through Wi-Fi. I've already actually connected to my home Wi-Fi. Uh, it's also by default coming with the uh, mobile data. Uh, there's a SIM card inside that comes free with the unit. Um, I believe it's for a first year only. Subsequent year, not quite sure what the subscription will be. But yeah, it's nice to have, uh, assuming that you are having the charger in the location where Wi-Fi connectivity isn't available. Oh, so we talked a little bit about system updates. I won't go there. Uh, Halo Light Standby. So this is interesting. Um, this is the perpetual light ring that you see on uh, the charger. Uh, I'll show you in a bit. This light ring, if you turn it off, the charger will perpetually have the LED on. I didn't necessarily want that because you know it can be quite distracting <laughs> in a car park which is really dark uh, to my neighbors. So I decided to put uh, the standby mode on. So the standby mode on only comes on uh, when you use the charger and it, to show the initial status after which it will turn off. So then there's the auto lock. This is more to prevent uh, unauthorized use if you want it to be. The next section is energy features, uh, under load management, solar and mid energy metering. I, I use none of those. I don't actually have solar at home. I don't actually have um, uh, electricity tap to kind of monitor and uh, shuffle load around the house. So this is a little bit of an extra. Next part is energy cost. This is where we put our tariff. So for me, my tariff is uh, 0.28 cents for every kilowatt hour. Uh, yours may differ. And obviously you can search uh, for the different currencies as well. The next section is installation option. I won't go into there. There's just one item there, which is the zero number of the unit. Uh, external management is uh, essentially whatever you need. Uh, if you have this as a um, public charger, it may be uh, connected to a billing app or a larger management app, etc., etc. Um, so yeah, that's under external management. And the last three options, restart, restore, and unlink, pretty much self-explanatory. So as you can see, the app is relatively straightforward, um, nothing too complex. So now let's go and plug the car in and I can show you a little bit about how this screen changes. So showing charging standby and then it goes into charging your vehicle state. Uh, immediately it shows how much uh, kilowatts is actually pulling from the grid into the vehicle. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the app. I think it's doing what it's supposed to do. Um, uh, the unfortunate thing obviously is the fact that I can't actually update the charger. But if you know the features that I'm missing out is largely the shared capability, I guess there's nothing uh, too much to worry about. But otherwise, Hopefully this video has been a little useful for you guys for deciding what charger to pick. Um, you know, by having a viewpoint on you know how the app works and how it looks and how the unit actually looks and function. You know, hopefully it makes your decision a lot easier. So as always, thanks again for your time. Uh, you do leave me a comment if you want to have a discussion about this topic. Uh, as always, subscribe, like, share.